All right, welcome back in the second part of the dynamic projectile ability. We're going to shrink everything down to make it one ability, one projectile, one everything, but at the same time be able to edit all these parameters and make a bunch of different kinds of projectiles out of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is come to the RPG ability system component. And we're going to make some functions. We're going to make a public function called void. Oh, excuse me. I need a private section. And the first thing in the private section I'm going to make is an F gameplay abilities spec handle. And we're going to call that active projectile ability. And then the second thing we're going to need is a T sub class of U gameplay ability and that is going to be the dynamic projectile ability and we're going to U property with edit defaults only categories custom values projectile ability now there's much better ways obviously to handle keeping track of active abilities um, Lyra uses ability sets, there's other ways, but for just all intents and purposes right now, until we get into a more established system later, we're just going to do it right here on the ability system component itself. So now that I have that, then I'll come back in the public section and I'll say void set dynamic projectile ability. Uh, just the dynamic projectile with a const f gameplay tag reference called projectile tag. And then we're going to come down in the private section and we'll say void server set dynamic projectile. That's going to take a const f gameplay tag by reference called projectile tag. And we're going to label this a u function server reliable. Because again, we only want to give abilities. We only want to give abilities and set all this stuff really if um, if we're on the server. So in set dynamic projectile, we're going to say if not get avatar actor, we're going to call has authority. Then we can just say server set dynamic projectile, passing through the projectile tag, and then return. So if we get underneath here, which means in here we're just going to call set dynamic projectile passing through the projectile tag. Um, and then actually we could check before here, we could say if not projectile tag dot is valid, we can return early just to save ourselves a little bit. So now we're going to say if dynamic projectile ability dot is valid it's not going to go that direction so we'll say if is valid dynamic projectile ability then we're going to make an f gameplay ability spec called spec and we're going to set that equal to f gameplay ability spec and then we're going to construct one with the dynamic projectile ability at level one for now and then we're going to say if this is a U projectile ability pointer and we'll say projectile ability and we're going to set that equal to cast U projectile ability onto the spec dot ability. And we're going to say projectile ability. We're going to set the projectile tag to spawn, set that equal to projectile tag. And then don't forget, because we want this to work on the input system as well, we need to take the spec.dynamic ability tags and add the tag. The projectile ability is still an RPG ability, so it has the input tag, so we have to do that. And then we're going to set the active projectile ability, that spec handle, we're going to set that equal to give ability, passing in the spec. When you give it, you can store it in an active handle to reference itself right and why would we do that is we're gonna say here first if 
active projectile ability, the spec handle, that is valid, then we can say clear ability passing through the active projectile ability, the handle. That way, we're only keeping track of one ability that we're giving ourselves. We're not going to be giving ourselves a bazillion different projectile abilities swapping through and toggling through all the different projectiles. So we're only going to want to do that. So now that we're going to be able to set all of this on the ability system component, what I'm actually going to do is we're going to come into the interfaces, into the ability system interface, and or the RPG ability system interface, and we're going to make another function that's going to be void set dynamic projectile and it's going to be a const f gameplay tag by reference called projectile tag this is a u function blueprint native events blueprint callable so we can use it in all the blueprints and we have to include gameplay tag container but what i'm actually going to do is in order to use this with the items uh, we don't have equipment and stuff yet but I do plan on making equipment and I plan on making them items. So I'm going to try to set myself up now for thinking down the down the road a little bit when I get items in there. The inventory component is owned by the player controller. So and the player controller has a reference to our RPG ability system component. So if I call use item on an item, I could have the ability to call the interface function on the owner of the ability of the inventory component as opposed to trying to get the ability system component off the player so what i want to do is come into the game into the player controller and i'm going to inherit from the i rpg rpg ability system interface and we're going to say implement RPG ability system interface and we're gonna say virtual void set dynamic projectile implementation which in here all we need to say is if is valid RPG ability system comp we can say RPG ability system comp set dynamic projectile passing through the projectile tag and then it'll worry about who has authority in the ability system component itself but the thing is is the ability system component lives on the player state and we only have this blueprint read only so we're gonna need to mark it up now we're gonna make it visible anywhere as well so we can actually edit the data there once we do that and we're going to recompile and come back into the editor. Okay, now that we're back in the editor, um, we need to do a couple things. One, we need to come on the player state. And in the player state, now if we come into the ability system component, we can put the dynamic projectile ability in our custom values. Which means we need to come back to the data and in the character class information and the starting abilities. We have the dynamic projectile ability. Let's go ahead and clear that out because we don't want it to be a starting ability. Now that we have those in there, we can come back into the projectile. Now we're going to toggle between type 1 and type 2. We made the projectile type 2 and we're going to give it projectile type one let's look at these actually i got a little ahead of myself we don't need to make two types of projectiles we just delete it that's the whole point of a dynamic projectile is you could just say dy bp dynamic projectile and then there we go now we can look for a cylinder And let's do a little bit different on the cylinder. Let's do 2000 uh, gravity scale 0 0.1. It should bounce and we're just going to leave it at full speed. 
We're going to take this, bump it up to 1500, and it still shouldn't bounce. Okay, so now that our player controller has this, we're going to come back to the player, player controller. And yeah, we're going to take number one, excuse me, we're going to take number one off the add items, and we're going to flip flop. And we can call set dynamic projectile from the ability system interface. And we can drag off here and make a little literal gameplay tag. And then we'll just take that and duplicate it. On A will come up here, on B will come down here. And on type 1 will be on this, and type 2 will be on this. And. So now we have all that filled out. Let's hit play. So I'm on the server and I can't move. So why don't we actually fix this? Why don't we make some... There we go. Now, I'm on the server. Press 1. I can shoot that one. Press 1 again. I can shoot this one. But it works on the client. I can press 1. And I'm still spawning them on the server. And then I can press 1 and bounce them around. And they are all being fully replicated. Oh, I didn't press 1. Now I did. And they're all being fully replicated between all the clients. But, um, of course, on the clients, this is kind of choppy movement, right? Because we're getting a replicated actor and it's got physics and etc etc so the world of spawning a projectile on the client locally predicted and having the server in sync with it and everything is a pretty deep topic there's a couple ways of doing it and we'll get into local prediction and some other things of the stuff that gas doesn't do at a later date but at least now we're running on our dynamic projectile.